Hey, everyone. We're taking a quick break to catch up with Courtney Claghorn, the owner of Sugared and Bronzed. Courtney, for our listeners who don't know, what is Sugared and Bronzed? At Sugared and Bronze, we specialize in sugaring and airbrush tanning that will leave you feeling flawless. Sugaring is an ancient Egyptian form of hair removal that offers a gentle and effective alternative to waxing. Our airbrush tanning is always applied by hand, never a machine, to ensure a natural and long-lasting tan. At Sugared and Bronze, we're committed to using only the highest quality products and techniques to ensure you look and feel your best. Visit sugaredandbronze.com to book your appointment today. Plus, we're open till 11 p.m. on weeknights. Hey everyone, welcome to The Zest, the official podcast of Orange Coast Magazine. I'm Chelsea Ranieri, and today's guest is the founder of Laguna Beaches The Fullest, which offers therapeutic grade saffron supplements for anxiety, depression, and more, and has been featured in Goop and Vogue. She is also the founder of the Harnaker Foundation for Arts and Culture, as well as Bale, which features products that infuse the elements of the countryside. In addition, she has a podcast of her own called Nikki Boswick Unfiltered, where she shares her personal journey, opinions, and ideas. Thank you so much for being here today, Nikki Boswick. Thank you so much for having me, Chelsea. I'm so excited to chat with you and and reconnect. Of course. Yeah. So you and I met years ago um, when you first started The Fullest as a magazine. And I wrote a couple articles for you and I've just been following your career ever since. So I have been very excited to get to talk with you. Mm-hmm. And quick side note, my mom is always stocked up on your saffron latte and saffron oh. threads. <laughs> I was like, I know that girl. And she like constantly is buying it. So we are you have oh. a big fan base in my family. Oh, that makes me so happy. (laughs) (laughs) Of course. So um, I read that you and your sister are first generation Iranian American and that you learned many traditional Persian remedies as you were growing up. What were some of the remedies that you learned? I mean, saffron was a big one that was used Mm -hmm. in my household. Um, But anything from like knowing that mint tea is really great if you have an upset stomach. Uh, yeah, like it, I mean, even if you're like hungover, it really is. Super yeah. <laughs> and I don't drink anymore, but I definitely <laughs> used to be like, "Mom, I don't feel good. I'm sick," and she would make it for me. Um, no not way. Hungover, yeah. And when I was growing up, and then I I learned just you know using um, I don't know if you're familiar with somak. It's like oh yeah, yeah. Somak is used a lot in our food and it's a berry that's dried and it's really great for just like absorbing fat and helping with cholesterol. And we use barberries, which are also really great for people with diabetes and managing blood sugar levels. So I learned a lot just through our food because food is medicine. And that was kind of something that I just grew up understanding. So I feel really blessed to have had that background. That's so interesting. I've tried I'm going to say it wrong, but sumac, you said? Yeah. I've tried that. I didn't realize it was a dry berry. It's so flavorful. Isn't it? It's so yeah. good. I put it on so, so good. Berries. Traditionally, it's used on kebab when you're having rice and kebab or kebab oh. uh, in general. But um, we spice up like everything and even like avocado toast with sumac is so good. So good. Wow. No idea it was a berry. It's so good. Mm-hmm. Um so my husband and I are high school sweethearts and I read that um, you and your husband are too? Yeah, I had no idea. Um, yeah. yeah, my husband and I have known each other since looking to, we went to Laguna Beach High School together. And oh. I was a junior and he was a senior. We met like the summer before our junior and senior year. And oh. we've been together ever since. I went. We went to Oregon State for college. He went first and then I followed. And oh. um, But we, we stayed together the whole time. So... Do you guys, yeah. do you have kids yet? No, but it's so funny because we were the reverse. So I was a senior and he was a junior oh, and he cool. came in like, he like missed my awkward phase. So it was like perfect timing, like yeah. as he came into the junior year and oh. I was like, Oh, perfect. So oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you went to the Matthew Kennedy Culinary Academy in 2013. Um, I had never heard of the school. What did you study there? So Matthew Kinney was an incredible chef. He was a James Beard award-winning chef in New York City. And he became vegan. And so he recreated all the beautiful recipes that he had kind of learned throughout his career and made them all raw vegan or vegan. And then he started his own culinary school. And that's after college, I went there because I really was really interested in wellness, but I studied business. And Mm -hmm. when you study business, I studied entrepreneurship. 
it's so broad. Like they don't teach you about a specific business. They just tell you about business. Right. So I was like, okay, now I need to go actually like learn about how to make food. If I want food to be a part of the business or whatever it is. I, at the time I wanted to open a wellness center and I was teaching yoga. And so I was like, okay, I know the yoga part. I need the food part. And I, I know the retail part just because my dad had um, a very long career in retail. So I went to culinary school. That's how I figured out that's the route I wanted to go. And he had opened his school in Santa Monica at the time. So I did his plant-based wow. program and I love Matthew Kenny's style of teaching because I mean, he had, it wasn't him personally that was teaching, but I got to know him as well. But it was really entrepreneurial because he was also mm-hmm. a serial and is a serial entrepreneur. And through that experience, I learned how to formulate um, my own products because that was part of the program. So I feel really blessed because not only did I learn a lot about plant-based nutrition and foods and um, making really unique things, but I also learned how to formulate and you know, you put everything in grams and you do specific things to be able to learn how to scale it as, um, as a product. So that's kind of how I, I, I was using saffron, but I was like, I thought I was going to do like the saffron ice cream thing that not doing, but it was a fun thing to learn. Definitely. And five years after you started that school, you created the fullest, which I, literally still remember the front cover. It was, it was on my coffee table for the longest time, but what inspired you to start? So it was a, it was a magazine, right? And yeah. an online publication as well. Yeah. So we started the magazine and the podcast and we were just really about wellness and mm-hmm. making it more contemporary. Cause at the time I felt like wellness was all about losing weight and shape magazine. Yeah. And that it was like, gut health was becoming a thing, but it was really about weight loss. And it always Mm -hmm. has been. And I felt like I had gone through so much in my own life that I learned it that at the end of the day, your emotions are so much more impactful on your health and well-being than anything else. Even if you're eating Mm -hmm. super clean or not intaking as much as you think you are and all the things at the end of the day, if you're stressed and you have a lot going on, that can impact even weight, make you gain more weight because you have like higher cortisol and you have specific snacking behaviors that can lead to um, you just keeping on more weight. But it's not about the weight either. It's mm-hmm. about letting go of so much trauma that's either yours or inherited. And so we decided to make it make that information available for more people, but bring them in and um, share it and not like a granola way, but more contemporary and exciting and fun way. So that's kind of was the inspiration for doing the magazine and the content and the podcast. And I always knew I wanted to have our own products, but I felt like I wanted to build the community based off of the mission, which is sharing that your emotions have so much more of an impact than we, you know, just like thinking about different religions and spirituality in general and blessing your food. And like, I'm really strict on my personal um, diet and uh, it's not really a diet to me. It's a lifestyle and I eat organic and all that. And it's important to me, but I also just believe that when you're intentional about what you do, it's even more important than the other stuff. So if you're being about the way that you eat and the way that you move and the way you communicate, it can have a better impact on your life than sourcing the best strawberries from Harry's. (laughs) They're like 20 something dollars and (laughs) crap. You know what I mean? It's just so backwards. So we started that way and the pop-up. Yeah. Yeah. So led into the pop-up because I felt like the best way to learn um, from our community, what can serve them was to have a pop-up of all my personally vetted wellness products that I believed in. It was not just wellness. It was like clothing that mm-hmm. have polyester in it. And it was organically sourced cotton and linen and natural fabrics to bags that were made from artisans and all sorts of things. So we launched the pop-up in Laguna and that's where I got the idea for our product because customers would come in and I wanted to have something unique to share with people that didn't 
wasn't in the wellness space and yeah. the education background. So people came in, they knew about turmeric, but no one knew about saffron. And that's when it kind of clicked in my brain. Like, wow, everyone's coming in for a turmeric. And we had this like turmeric mix, but no one knows that saffron is way more potent. Not, I love turmeric when we have it in our capsules, but saffron, you need just 30 milligrams to have this incredibly therapeutic experience. Whereas with turmeric, you need 600 milligrams. And oh, wow. It's just a lot more that you need, but it's a lot, it's way less expensive. And it's a different, um, it's all around different. Turmeric's really great for inflammation and so is saffron, but saffron can do all these other things. So, yeah, can you talk a bit? Cause I was reading on on your website, there's like, it helps with anxiety and depression and ADHD. Like, do you know the science like behind that? Like, why it does those things? Yeah. So, What's really cool about saffron is that we've known about the the benefits for treating depression and anxiety and all that for centuries. I mean, it's been used across cultures, especially in my culture for postpartum depression. And so this, like the ancestral knowledge was there and I learned about it, but then after culinary school, when I really started to research and I learned that science has actually been able to back it because there's so many herbs and spices that don't have scientific evidence backed by it really. And Mm -hmm. having a specific dose, like I didn't learn about how much saffron I needed to take. So then I started doing the research and I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. There's so many double blind placebo studies that are all peer reviewed and they're sharing the dose, which is just 30 milligrams which is still a lot more than you would get in your traditional cooking. Mm. 15 threads is the equivalent of 30 milligrams. So if you've seen saffron, each flower just grows with three threads or strands. So five flowers need to be harvested for a therapeutic dose. In our latte, we use 25 flowers for each serving for a very potent medicinal dose. That's more of a traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic dosage. But in the science, scientific studies, they all started with 30 milligrams, which was really cool. And they found that 30 milligrams of saffron was just as effective as the generic form of Prozac in treating (laughs) depression. And also they found they did... So that was fluoxetine. That's the generic form of Prozac. The Mm -hmm. other studies that they've done is they've had 30 milligrams of saffron um, against methylphenidate, which is the generic form of Ritalin. And they found that it's just as effective as ADHD meds, basically, which is methylphenidate. And the reason this is happening, which you asked, is because when you're calm, when you calm mm-hmm. down your nervous system, you can actually function better in terms of focus, right? And yeah. you're calming down your nervous system, so you have less anxiety. And w- what's really happening is 90% of your serotonin is created in your gut. And when your gut is compromised, you're creating less serotonin. So saffron is really incredible for gut health because it's a major anti-inflammatory and it helps people with IBS and digestive conditions. And what it's doing over the long term is it's helping and right away too, a lot of people feel the effects within an hour of taking it. So there's like instant benefits and then cumulative benefits over the long term where you're basically training your body. You're getting to the root cause so that your body is creating its own optimal levels of serotonin and dopamine. And so that's how you're getting those effects of like not feeling blue and all of those beautiful, beautiful things that we all need, especially during this time. Yeah. And it tastes amazing too. The latte is like my favorite, but can you talk a bit about the different um, products that you have? So we mentioned the latte and the threads, um, but you also have several other products as well. Yeah. So we're really focusing on the latte, the threads and the capsules. The capsules are called kinder thoughts and the latte is called warm feelings. So warm feelings is made with 150 milligrams of saffron per serving, which is about 25 flowers that are harvested because it uses saffron in its raw, um, most raw form. Basically it takes saffron threads and then those threads are 
ground or grind used in a grinder to make a powder and then mix with our coconut milk powder, coconut water powder, mm-hmm. and cardamom because saffron and cardamom is like such a beautiful combination in terms of flavor. And mm-hmm. also um because cardamom has beautiful medicinal benefits as well. Like it's anti-anxiety, but you have to take a lot of it. We oh, use a good amount. We use 125 milligrams, which is still a lot, but yeah. it um you need a crazy amount like <laughs> milligrams or something to oh, get. Okay. Yeah. But still it, it tastes really good. If you're familiar more with turmeric, I like to say turmeric is, reminds me more of ginger in terms of flavor. Mm-hmm. It's like more pungent, whereas saffron is very gentle, like rose and cardamom and it's softer on the palate. So it just tastes really, really special with the coconut and you can mix it with either um, steamed milk or just a little bit of hot water and some milk of choice or just continuing to drink it with hot water. But if you want it iced, you can make it kind of like a matcha. I don't know if you've ever had it yeah. iced. Yeah. But it's like you basically mix it with a little bit of hot water. So it, the consistency is good and it's all, um, you know, certain blended in well, and then you add whatever um, water or milk that you want to add to keep it ice. I love doing it iced in the summer. So yeah. Kinder Thoughts capsules are really exciting too, because someone that might not like the flavor or night might already have their like morning or evening beverage of choice can get it in just capsule form and get all the therapeutic benefits that Saffron has to offer. And you can take it in the morning. Um, you know, if you're drinking your coffee or matcha or whatever, and get those benefits like laser sharp focus throughout the day and just an elevated mood. I've had people tell me, you know, I've been in the middle of feeling crazy anxious, almost feeling like they had like an anxiety attack coming on and they drank or took the supplement and they were like, I felt it within 30 minutes. And it's really exciting because the capsules use a saffron extract. So this extract is called Afron and it's been um, it's undergone 10 different clinical trials. And uh, it, so it's like substantiates a lot of the information that we share about saffron in general, which is not just anxiety, depression, and um, ADHD, but also help support sleep. And so if you're someone who has insomnia, like you can take it at night or just racing thoughts and you, you have a hard time sleeping in general or staying asleep, you can take the saffron and it helps you have a deeper, more restful sleep. And it's just because you're just calming down your nervous system. So it helps you wind right. down at night and it's really, really helpful for that. And I know a lot of people have um, a trouble sleeping and I think it's just yeah with so many screens and all that stuff. So I think just like, you know, incorporating it into your lifestyle is also just really important to know. And we, we all have stressful things that happen and sometimes it's just out of our control. Like we might be experiencing a specific thing, like the loss of a loved Mm -hmm. one, or you're going through a divorce or something that it's not um, an immediate lifestyle change that can happen. And you just really need that support or you're a student, you're, you're going through school and you need that extra support for focus, or you have a really intense job and that needs all of your, um, attention. And I think it's a really great opportunity to incorporate something that nature has given us. And I, what I love about it is it's not synthetic. It's something derived from nature. A lot of supplements can be synthetically derived. And this is something that is so wholesome to me. And, and so it's really difficult to overdose on saffron actually, (laughs) um, because of how expensive it is, especially. And people ask us all the time, like, can I drink more than one or two lattes? Of course you can. Um, (laughs) You can drink a lot, but if you're pregnant, you don't want to drink the latte. And so that's like a really good one is um, saffron when taken at crazy, crazy high doses. Um, I mean, it's not the dose of one or two lattes, but we just say it. But still, when you take really high doses of the latte, which would be like an entire 30 serving bag or more, (laughs) um, you it acts as an abortive. So that's why women should not take it. Once you hit like your third, late third trimester, like 37 weeks and beyond, you can start to incorporate saffron 
for pre-labor prep because it opens up the pelvic floor and also wow. helps management for when you're in labor. So it's actually a really, really great tool to have. So if someone is pregnant, you can say, keep this in your stash for like late pregnancy. And then you want to start to drink like one and then two and three or do the capsules. And I did it and it was amazing. I had a home birth with my child and I didn't take anything. I had so much saffron and it was better than my epidural birth in the hospital, basically. So, oh my God, that's incredible. Thank you. I, uh, it's just so incredible for pain management. So you can keep it on hand, like the capsules I like to use for like, instead of Advil, because it's such a major anti-inflammatory, it can really help with headaches and stuff like that. So you can use it in that way where you're just like, Oh, I have it in my medicine cabinet for specific things. If I have joint pain for muscle recovery, for like those inflammatory experiences, um, Mm -hmm. headaches, after a flight for jet lag, all those things, or, um, you can have it as a supplement, like a daily supplement. Yeah. God, it's like literally like magic. (laughs) Um, Really crazy. So as I mentioned, uh, you are a co-founder of the Hanukkah foundation for arts and culture. And for every purchase at the fullest, you donate 2% to this foundation. Um, can you talk a bit about what the foundation does? Yes. So what's really fun is we've had this foundation for about four years, but we didn't have a physical space. That was just our way of giving back to our community in Laguna. Mm -hmm. And my dad's really involved in the community in Laguna. And my sister has been through being a big part of his company, which is in real estate development. And my sister is way more involved in the family business than I am because I'm doing like stuff with the fullest, but (laughs) we're both involved now, which is really exciting. And with the foundation having a physical space, we're just really excited because there's a space across from Whole Foods in Laguna Beach that has been a property that my dad, my sister and I have been obsessed with since I was a little girl. And we didn't really know what it was. It's like mixed, it's um, changed hands a few times, but for the majority of the last over a decade, maybe longer, um, maybe like 15, 20 years, there was this man that owned it and he had it for his private art collection. And then he also donated it, the space to UC Irvine so that they oh, can wow. use it. And they've had it for years to showcase artwork as well. So it was always privately shown to mm. art collectors and different people, um, but it wasn't available and open to the public. My dad, so our last name, Hanarkar, translates mm. to artist in Farsi. What? Yes. So my sister is such an artist. I'm more creative in my own way um, with you know, my products yeah, stuff like that. But my sister is a um, very talented artist. And then my dad, he studied, um, he minored in art as well. Oh my God. And we just have loved Laguna so much. We, this, um, this space has always been something we loved and it came on the market. And what's really cool about the space is that it used to be the original post office for Laguna beach. Oh my gosh. How cool like a historic space basically, but it's been totally redone on the inside. It looks so incredible. And I've outside, seen the Instagram. Oh my God. It looks gorgeous. Thank you. And the former owner was the one that did the remodel and it's so beautiful. And, um, just, he took a lot of pride in, in what he did and he did such a beautiful job. And so we're just really grateful to have taken it over and now having this physical space. The idea was not only can we showcase emerging artists and art- artists that have been around for so long with beautiful work, but also um, we can support the local community by hosting events there that help other nonprofits that we previously supported, but they can do their fundraisers there and have different events and um, showcase not just you know the art on the walls, but different types of art. Like we've brought in opera singers and and different. Um, events have been done in there. I've hosted tea ceremonies in there. Um, I'm hosting, I'm going to be bringing the conferences back. We used to have them at the fullest and I'm going to do really small, more intimate, like 70 person conferences there. I've hosted, um, yeah, just, we've done different events that have been really fun. So it's been a way to, um, bring in the art and culture. That's where the Hanukkah foundation for art and culture comes into play. Mm -hmm. And 
with the fullest, we're all about mental and emotional well being. And community is such a big part of that, right? The people that you surround yourself with, the community that you're involved in is such a big part of your emotional well being. And so we want to incorporate that aspect. And that's why I support the foundation with it because then um, we can do so much more with the space. There's so much that we have left to do. Like we just launched it late last year, hasn't even been a year, but having this space has enabled us to um, just be more involved and offer more to the community and have it be a public space for people to come to, which has been really fun and exciting. And we have um, a lot more stuff in the works, which is going to be to share. We have a light and space exhibition coming up late this year. And that's going to be in line with when the Getty does their Pacific standard time. So it's kind of like an offshoot where you can come in Orange County, you can go to our space and view something that might be similarly viewed um, up there. And a lot of people from LA are coming down to visit and it brings... um, it elevates the art space we think in Laguna, which is always yeah. exciting. Definitely. I like need to check that out. And also congratulations on getting that up and running last only last year. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. We have a really wonderful curator and Peter Blake who owns Peter Blake galleries in Laguna has been really instrumental in helping us with the space. He has such a beautiful eye. And so we're learning a lot from him and the people in our community with what we can do. And that's just been really exciting. And what I love about it is um, the fact that it was like the former post office. It's just another to like freedom of speech and how that plays into um, the art world too, which is so exciting. Definitely. Um, And then you also co-founded, which is just amazing, Bail. And all the products on the site are so cute. And I also noticed that you carried Juna and we also featured... um, Oh yeah, I saw that. They were on your podcast. Yeah. They're incredible. Um, So how'd you come up with the idea for this company? If you don't mind explaining kind of what it is as well. Yes. So Bail is a marketplace for everyday goods for people who are into natural living basically and slow living. And Mm -hmm. if you recall, we just talked about the fullest pop-up and I had so many products at the fullest pop-up that I absolutely loved and I personally used. And when we transitioned to only carrying our own products online, um, there was this part of me that just missed so much just sharing about these other products that I use in my life. And as part of a lifestyle, it was a business decision decision to really focus on just our products because we felt Mm -hmm. like we can really educate the consumer specifically on one item and not confuse them or like one concept, right? Like saffron. Whereas if we had all these other products, it's like a different business model and it's more of a marketplace. So it was something that in the back of my mind, I always was like one day that'll happen and it'll just happen organically. And there was this one employee that I had who had been with me for a while, not at the pop-up, but like I I met her in the pop-up days. And then Mm -hmm. she came on um, as an employee and we just share such a similar philosophy on living and the things that we like to use that we were both like, okay, this is the time we... we, figured out a way on the fullest. We had been asked by like Saks to be on dropship and different brands. We started doing dropship for the fullest. And a lot of these bigger companies are doing that. So then <laughs> we realized, okay, that's a great way for us to start our own marketplace, basically, where we have all these beautiful brands that we love, like Juna, and but we don't have to hold on to the inventory because that's a really big um just like deterrent for starting a business, right? right? this crazy amount of inventory because you want to share all these different products and holding on to that is a big cost. So if we can have a dropship marketplace where we really authentically share the brands that we love without having that cost associated with holding on to the inventory, it helps us market the products and it feels so much lighter for us because we're not like, oh my God, we have you know, a hundred pieces of this unit and we have to move this skew so badly. And that's why we're marketing it. It's not like that. It's more like, these are all the products we love. These are products that are going to either elevate your everyday, or maybe you're someone who comes onto the site and you're overwhelmed with 
moving to more natural products in your household from your personal care products to household products. And you're like, where do I even begin? And how do I do the research? Like we did the research for you. Just come on. Yeah. Yeah. Basically whatever product you have, like we're starting, I mean, it's just the beginning stages too. We, we launched it in April, but we're onboarding new brands every week. And so, um, eventually it'll be like even a way bigger Rolodex. And when you're like, you know, I need to replace this mascara and I don't know what to get. We have the mascara, whatever you can replace eventually like a mattress. We're talking to a mattress company right now that I absolutely love. So it's like, what mattress should I get or what, um, whatever it is, right. You just come onto the website and you see what we've curated for you because those are the brands we trust. And the reason we love it is because they use natural materials like wool and cotton and leather. And it helps us go back to, you know, being more intentional again with what we include in our life. And the impetus of it was really this thing where we both were like daydreaming of moving to a farm and just like (laughs) having the countryside be where we were. But the reality of our lives is that our families are all in like Crown del Mar and Laguna. (laughs) We're not going to move to a farm anytime soon or have buy a ranch anytime (laughs) soon. But How can we bring in elements of the countryside into our everyday lives so that when we look at, you know, just like, um, anything that we've incorporated, like wool dryer balls or whatever random thing it is, you're, or like tallow skincare. You're like, oh, okay, this reminds me to slow down. This is the energy of what the countryside would bring me. But in my everyday routine that I am in the city or um, luckily where we are in like the beach cities. And yeah, so definitely check it out. Bale means homestead in Irish in old Irish. So it's really, um, exciting because Kylie, who's my business partner, that's her lineage. And I felt like I had something that really, um, resonated with me with the saffron in my lineage. And so when I thought of that, I was like, Oh my gosh, Kylie, there's a word for you. And what's super cool is, um, Ireland incorporates saffron and has incorporated saffron for so many years. So I just feel like it, um, something that we both share in common, which is fun. Yeah. It's like a full circle moment. Um, so you mentioned drop ship. So is that like you have, you pull these, uh, different, you create these different products on your website and then people can just buy it and it's through you, but how does that work? Yeah. So you just like are shopping on our website and it's like normal, but it comes, it gets shipped to you from multiple sources. Got it. So like if you That's came cool. on and you got something from Juna and from Summer Solace, who makes all the tallow stuff that we love, then it would get sh- sent to you from Juna directly and from Summer Solas directly. And it enables smaller brands who have a small amount of inventory to work with us because they might not be able to produce a lot of units. But if we get sales, they can just send it directly as if it came from their own website. Wow. That is real. I've never heard of that before. That's a really cool business model. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. It took a while. We were like, one day something will come to us and it'll make sense. And then we'll launch. It and yeah. and um, I want to share about this woman that I love who curates all of the vintage items on our website, Ooh. and she has great taste. She's in Corona Del Mar, and it's called Shop Maison. That's her brand, and so we've partnered with Shop Maison. And it because this is Orange Coast Magazine, I thought it just makes the most sense if people in Orange County order, she hand delivers it to you. It's what? me. Yeah. And she has, she curates so many beautiful vintage items from local markets. And so it's always fun because it's kind of like within the community. Um, I mean, she ships to our other customers, but when it's in Orange County specifically, she'll hand deliver or she can um, just find something that you want to. If you're like, like recently there was this church pew, this beautiful, beautiful old vintage bench, a uh, church bench. And I saw, it and I was like, Oh my gosh, I need this. I love it. And she got it. And, um, I bought it from her, but it's like, if you have a specific item in mind, you can also reach out to her and she can curate it for you, which is always fun. Wow. She sounds amazing. That's so sweet that she hand delivers it. I love that. I've never heard yeah. of anyone doing that before. Um, <laughs> okay. So do you have anything coming up that listeners should keep an eye out for, whether it's your podcast or one of your brands? Yeah. So we're going to be, 
um, as you know, I just love business and I love sharing business tips with people. And I think that, um, business is a path to freedom with so many people like women and especially women who are at home and they're with their kids, but they want something on the side, but they can't necessarily, um, commit to a regular schedule with an employee. It's always exciting to start your own thing and, um, or just someone who wants to scale. I feel like I've learned so much. So we, I want to, um, I'm like in the process of planning a really intimate business conference at the foundation with the fullest, with all the different brands, because like throughout the years of just having the podcast and interviewing so many founders and, and, and learning from different founders and a lot of different spaces, not just the supplement space, but also like with marketing and with, um, just understanding like the psychology behind your customers and all of those sorts of things. Um, I just feel like I've gathered a lot of information and people that have guided me and I always want to share what I've learned with others. And so that's something that I'm going to be incorporating is a conference and, and then we'll hopefully bring back like a sort of wellness, um, lifestyle conference as well. So just be on the lookout with that sort of thing. I feel like we took a break just with COVID and, kind of reorganizing what we want to bring and what information we want to bring out into the world. And I think anything that can support your mental and emotional well-being and also support you in getting to where you want to be in life, and I, I think is so important because every aspect of your life goes back to um, affecting your well-being, whether it's your relationships, your your career, your, um, family, your work, your work is so, so crucial Mm -hmm. because we work most of the day. Right. And then we go home and we're with our kids. And so parenting, learning how to be, um, with our colleagues, like so many things. So I want to start to incorporate those sorts of things into our conferences and So just be on the lookout for that if you're someone who's interested. And I think it's fun to have in Orange County because a lot of these conferences are in really big cities in like LA or New York. Um, That's where in the past we held our conferences. But the more and more I'm rooted back into being in Laguna because um, when I first launched The Fullest, I kind of just moved back home. And now Mm -hmm. I'm just more deeply rooted in town. And I just want to bring these sorts of things to our community in Orange County and Laguna specifically, because when people travel to Laguna, they automatically... It's like me going to Hawaii too. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, like you're by the beach, it's less stressful than being in a city. And so mm-hmm. when you can have conferences in places like that, it adds this element of um, relaxation to it as well. Totally. Which is, yeah. I mean, even me going to Laguna Beach, I feel that like I'm on vacation there. It's just such yeah. a different feeling. It's so nice. Well, I'm very much excited for those conferences. I will definitely be attending if I can. Thank you. I'm uh, so excited to attend. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we're coming to the end of our time, but before I let you go, I have three final questions for you that we call the thoughtful three. Um, so one, what is one wellness routine that you think everyone should adopt? Ooh, that's a really good one. Um, (laughs) My wellness routines have changed throughout the years. I used to do like a million things when I didn't have kids. (laughs) And now I'm like, I just need one thing. And for me, it's just making, um, like making it a point to take a moment to literally sit down with yourself and like either journal or like whatever it is, just sit down. And, um, I use obviously our saffron latte. If I'm not drinking the saffron latte, it's like a matcha, whatever it is, you sit down and you have something physical that helps you get more in tune with like the present moment, basically. So maybe that's a beverage. Maybe that's just a pen and paper, whatever it is that's physical. Maybe it's like walking is physical, but like you can't be on your phone and walking is a hard one to walk, but like we constantly are on our phone or have a podcast or something, but being still and quiet and like you get, I get such incredible ideas and thoughts that come through my mind when I'm still in quiet and just enjoying 
whatever it is that I'm drinking or I love writing things down because I feel like, um, stream of consciousness, like writing helps Mm. me a lot with just like getting out my ideas. So either I do like the beverage thing or what I started to do with writing things down is I go to, so if you are listening to this and you're familiar with Laguna, there's this cute little church and I have an office right across from it. My office is right downtown in Laguna and the church downtown Laguna Presbyterian is the sweetest little church and they (laughs) leave out cards that you can, and pen and like paper, and you can write on there. And I'm not religious. I don't subscribe to any religion actually, but I, um, really respect and admire every religion Mm -hmm. and I love holy spaces too. So I feel like you don't have to go to the church to do this. I happen to just go there because it's across from my office and it makes me feel really great, but just writing down like your intentions, it's such a beautiful practice. And you start to learn more about what priorities you have in life and like start to just naturally focus on that. So I highly recommend that. Or if you're not going to go to a space, just make yourself a drink, um, a tea or whatever it is and sit down and just be still. It's, it does so much. You don't have to like be a meditation master or download a meditation app or whatever, like you can just sit in stillness for like two minutes because being a parent is like impossible <laughs> having that time. So, okay. Yeah. That's one of the things that I highly recommend. <laughs> that's what the stream of consciousness writing is. So I like, I want to try that. That sounds really helpful. Yeah. Uh, what is one habit that you feel has helped you become successful in your career? Um, I'm really persistent. So I think that persistence is very, has been really important for me because I've changed the fullest a lot, right? Like it used to be a magazine. It used to be, um, so many things. I, the fullest podcast was big for a long time. And then it, it's now my personal podcast. So we've changed a lot of things, but the mission has never changed. And I've stayed true to the mission and I've been persistent in, um, adapting to what makes sense and what works. So, you know, I've been, I can be really stubborn at times and I feel like, if I was like really stubborn and I was like, no, we have to keep all of the content and all of this, yeah, all, of right. the, all of the products. That was my original vision. Like if I was going to be stubborn and keep it that way, then it, I don't think it would work. But because I've been um, persistent and adaptable at the same time, I think that's really served me because it's taken like 10 years basically for it to really pan out. But I think every it, there's no such thing as an overnight success. And I think it takes at least five years for businesses to start to come together and make sense and find out what their niche is and where their strength lies. And that's where you can start to base your expansion off of. Yeah. I've seen a quote somewhere. I was like an over, overnight success takes 10 years or something like that. Yeah. That's so it's true. true. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then lastly, what moments in your career have had the most significant impact on who you are today? Oh my gosh. Um, I feel like becoming a mom and having just, um, that I like this, that thought in the back of my head, you know, am I, if I'm going to do this, if this is going to be my career, it better make sense and it better work because it, it better be worth it because I'm taking time away from my children. And so I think being a mom has made me such a more efficient entrepreneur and person in life. Just not just my work in anything I do. I don't want to waste time and I'm not like type A crazy like that or anything. Um, I just feel like it brought so much perspective to my life and I love it. It's the best thing that ever happened to me. I love it so much and I feel like that's what um, drives me to continue doing what I do because I feel like my children not only give me the sense of purpose, but also I feel like my career um, makes so much more sense. Oh, I love that. Well, that's amazing. Well, thank you so much for doing this. This is so much fun talking with you and getting to reconnect. Yeah. I love reconnecting. I'm so honored to be on your podcast and I'm looking forward to continuing to listen to the next episodes that you have. Yeah. And everyone go listen to Nikki Boswick unfiltered. Thank you.